was using his position of authority to give people passes to get out of the draft, did masturbation studies, had people come in after hours, milked their prostate. Then complaints started coming about how Dr. Anderson was treating and taking liberties with young men primarily, performing a number of extended examinations in the genital area. All the players were mandated to actually go see Dr. Anderson. The day they stepped onto campus, they had to have a physical. I was recruited by Les Miles at a time when my senior year in high school, my mother had breast cancer. One of the things in my initial meeting with Dr. Anderson for my physical, he mentioned that I realized your mother has cancer. You know, I need to do a prostate cancer screening exam. You don't get a prostate exam when you're 18 years old, 17 years old, 20 years old. That went on for my entire career at Michigan. That part of the exam was a part of every exam. He abused a number of athletes and players due to just the physical. And then if you would go for an injury, you would still get the full invasive examination. I was uh, recruited in 1977, they came to my home, promised my parents that they would provide me with a great education. They promised that we would have uh, the best medical doctors. Well, my first physical exam, I, I felt that I was uh, raped. After doing the normal weight, blood pressure, your normal physical that you had all through high school, all of a sudden, he went down there and he said, if I get an erection, don't worry. And I grabbed his wrist, pulled my pants up, and left the room. I was walking back to my dorm room and I knew something was wrong. This is not an examination. They were raped. Sexual assault, criminal sexual conduct in the first, second, third degree. But this actually goes back even before that. Matt Schembechler which is Bo's son, was sexually assaulted by Dr. Anderson when he was approximately 10 years old in 1969. And he told Bo in 1969, and he told Don Cannon. My first physical, I remember that I just knew this is not right. I beelined it home on my stingray and told my mom, there's something really wrong here. And, and uh, she said, you, you gotta tell Bo, you gotta tell. You gotta tell Bo. Bo was a great coach. Bo was an icon to some extent. I also remember talking to a player whose name I won't mention, that Bo said, no, you shouldn't take engineering classes because that would take too much time away from you doing what you have to do to make us successful. Bo was very hard to approach. You had to earn his respect. You knew no was no. You didn't go back and pull on his pants and say, I have a problem. You sweat and solved it yourself. And uh, so he got home and she said, Matt's got something to tell you. You need to hear this. Bo just, I could see him starting to, he was like a, a tea kettle. You, when he got pissed, I mean, you could see that face turning red, you know, and I could see him getting pissed. And that's the first time I ever remember seeing that, you know, his, his tempers, you know, legendary. He closed fist punched me as hard as he could, right in the chest, right in front of my mom. In my heart and soul, I needed him to protect me. Don't let this man do this to me or anybody else. Bo's reaction to the thing, that really, that that really, really hurt me, you know? It, it was a betrayal. It's like, wow, you're not gonna back me on this? Why was he allowed to do this? Medals over rights of athletes. Big 10 championships over rights of athletes or students. 
those seeds were planted from day one when you started to look at attending the University of Michigan. And nothing will get in the way of the Michigan way, which is about wins, Big Ten championships, and playing in the Rose Bowl. It's all about winning. And what did Bo did? He won. Anderson used the fact that these were athletes that needed a physical to be able to stay on the team, keep their scholarship. He knew that. He used the fact that students have a certain amount of trust for the university. He had control of these kids' lives. And a lot of them had no other options, man. I mean, some of these guys came from some pretty dire circumstances, right? So it's the best opportunity they've had in their life and maybe the best they'll ever have. Our women clients that are assaulted by Anderson, they actually think that they're the silent victims because no one's really talking about them. But they're there. Anderson, he was a predator across the board. It didn't matter. Michigan messed up big time. And Michigan should have stopped it. No one knows why Bo did not say anything. But we do know 950 people were assaulted. 950 people aren't making it up. People that have been sexually assaulted don't come forward until their late 40s, early 50s. A lot of it is because of victim shaming and victim blaming. I know there are some that have still not come forward. And it's part of that male ego. Part of it is the African-American even even stronger of you have to be strong to survive as an African-American male in this country. And part of being strong is not admitting that you're vulnerable, that you were taken advantage of. What people don't realize is how many lives it affects besides my own. But there's many guys I talk to that are starting to have the courage, that are starting to want to come forward because they're coming to the realization that, quite frankly, Michigan failed us then and they're failing us now. It's a hollow apology to say, we're sorry for what Anderson did. No, you allowed this to happen. Why don't you apologize for your own conduct or lack of conduct or lack of following through? That's not only how we feel, that's how we will continue to feel until they apologize for the atrocities that have lasted and will last a lifetime. What we're trying to do is we're trying to change the culture, change the narrative so that our children can learn about this and hopefully institutions can learn about this so this can be prevented. If they want me to help be a part of ensuring this never happens to kids again, I have no choice. <laughs>